Hello. Yes. Good evening. Let's <coughs> should we wait or let's start? Let's start. People will join as we are keeping uh, discussing it. Okay. Let's continue. In the previous class, what we have discussed, we have discussed about metal uh, specific. I mean, we have stopped here specific cutting energy, and we have solved some problems. And uh, I think we have recorded the another lecture. Fine. Okay. Let's start from here. Okay. I clearly mentioned what is specific cutting energy. Specific cutting energy is nothing but the amount of energy required to remove unit volume of material from workpiece. And also clearly have mentioned in the previous class how this uh, cutting power, uh, how this specific uh, cutting energy is cutting power by MRR, right? How did I, how did I say that? It's because I told you it's sorry. Where is it? Energy by what happened? Huh? Okay. Oh. Guys, uh, let me pause the recording for some time. I have to set something. One minute. Okay. In the previous class, we have discussed this. That is cutting power by MRR. So how did I? How did we get this thing? We got this thing. Is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. So, cutting energy per volume, right? Energy, energy by volume, right? And divided, we divided energy by time, and we have divided volume by time. Energy by time is power. Volume by time is nothing but MRR. We have discussed that, and that's the reason why we have written as cutting power by MRR. Already I told you MRR is volume by time, volume of metal removed by time, and volume of metal removed is nothing but thickness, width into length of the material that is not removed from the workpiece, and divided by time. And L1 by T1 we have already seen that is cutting velocity. So and I already told you in machining, especially in lathe and single point cutting tool, I told you this uncut chip thickness. Is equivalent to feed, and width of chip thickness, width of chip before cutting, before cutting is equivalent to depth of cut, right? So that's the reason why uncut chip thickness I have written as F, width I have written as D, L1 by T1 I have written as cutting velocity, right? So it has become like this. This is T1 into V1, that is FD VC is equal to. Uh, okay, sorry. The cutting uh, specific cutting energy is this. That is, we have known that force into velocity gives rise to power. Cutting force into cutting velocity divided by speed into depth of cut into cutting velocity. This has got cancelled. That's the reason why finally we got answer as cutting force divided by speed into depth of cut. And I already mentioned. Please write these things in your short notes so that you keep on revising it, it again and again. At the end, it will be useful for you. Let's proceed for today's class. The next topic that we are going to discuss is heat generation in machining. There are three zones that we have to consider where the heat is generated. The three zones are very important. What are the three zones? The three zones are this. First is primary zone. That is, the primary zone is occurring between chip and workpiece. The chip is trying to flow. Sorry, chip and tool. Huh? No, chip and workpiece. Sorry, this chip is trying to flow on the tool, and this is the place where the shearing is happening. This is the place where the shearing is the Shearing action is happening. I told you already. If, if at all you are trying to, you know, 
this is what in this direction what is this okay what is this anyone what is this what is this velocity what is this velocity which velocity is this anyone what is the velocity in which the, the tool is going onto the workpiece what is this velocity this is shear velocity this is shear velocity this is shear velocity what is this velocity in which the tool is going up what is this velocity sorry this is shear velocity v s sorry what is this velocity is it not cutting velocity is it not cutting velocity in the in the previous diagram what we have seen we have seen the diagram like this yes yes so we told this is cutting velocity right so here just we have rotated this in 90 degrees like this and it has become this thing so obviously we should not get confused with that this is cutting velocity and what is this velocity here anyone what is this velocity the chip is coming out and what is that velocity is it not vf chip flow velocity isn't it isn't it chip flow velocity the chip is coming in this direction here we have written it in this direction vf isn't it and this was vs this was vs shear velocity please do what what i've done what i've done here it's nothing but rotation of 90 degrees that's it here the diagram has rotated in 90 degrees that's it you have to take care of that fine now now the chip the chip <coughs> is trying to shear and what is happening here here atom is breaking atoms it means that chip is trying to shear or the layers of materials are getting sheared there in this plane it means that atoms are getting destructed atoms get, are getting teared off sheared off in the sense it is generating huge amount of temperature so maximum temperature is being generated in this place between workpiece and chip and that is occurring at the shear or uh, near the shear plane and that zone is known as primary zone you see energy supplied is used for breaking atom bonds atomic bonds at atoms between atoms atoms release equivalent heat energy 70 to 75 percent of total heat generated is in this zone see let's say the total heat generated is h in that 0.7 h or 70 percent of h is generated in this place okay that is what is primary zone this will be a question this will be a question in gate or sorry in gate and hr also this will be a question sometimes they'll be asking what is this zone primary zone or where in one two three four where uh, more amount of heat is generated you should select which one to the option will be one two three four or abcd right next secondary zone what is secondary zone here what is this space rake space right this is rake space on the tool and back rake angle right this is back rake angle and you know this is here alpha back rake angle alpha right and the chip is trying to flow it is trying to flow on this area it is trying to flow like this it is trying to flow as the chip is trying to flow the chip is rubbing with the tool and if due to this rubbing friction is generated due to friction temperature is generated and that is uh, that is what is secondary zone primary zone is this secondary zone is this because of presence of friction between tool chip interface energy supplied is converted into heat energy 15 to 20 percent of heat is generated in this zone so this is 70 to 75 this is 15 to 20 so these values are not exact same values what is it might be varying here and there but most of the temperature will be generated here and here a little bit of less but not too less good amount of temperature is generated and now what yes in both the cases there is interface workpiece and chip tool and chip in both the cases i mean in primary zone and secondary zone chip is common and you know what good part chip will take away maximum temperature away in the sense chip will absorb more amount of temperature and it will thrown away it will be throwing away it's not good it's good it's good right because if temperature is generated it should not the temperature should not be absorbed by workpiece otherwise workpiece will be getting heated and the properties of workpiece may, might be changing and the machining will not occur properly in the secondary zone if at all tool is getting the heat 
and two is absorbing absorbing the heat tool might get uh, you know wear down easily or my tool might get distracted very easily and again uh, it is of course it will cost you and secondary the machine will not perform well right so because of that because, not because of that as this is happening it is good i'm saying it, what is what is happening here chip is taking the maximum amount of energy uh, temperature from these two zones when uh, correct, when this machine is occurring next is tertiary zone what is tertiary zone it is occurring between tool and workpiece sir how sir how tool and workpiece are? of course because what is this angle anyone what is this angle what is this angle here anyone this angle this angle here this angle anyone you can tell me at least i need some answer what is this tool is yes praveen you are right relief angle amazing even though you have given relief angle why did you give in uh, why did you give relief angle in the first place you have given relief angle in the first place because you don't want this workpiece to get rubbed with this tool and even though you are giving relief angle because of some issues because of some recovery and all there will be little rubbing action that is taking place between the tertiary zone or uh, that is taking between the workpiece and the tool and that is why this kind of small amount of heat is generated in this case okay so that is what is your tertiary zone clearly i have mentioned here this is your relief angle and this is your you know uh, velocity and all these things and everything is clear right so the energy supplied is converted into heat energy because presence of friction at tool work piece interface and 5 to 10 percent of energy is converted into heat zone and here you remember maximum amount of heat is carried away by the work piece here work piece is more volume right because of that good amount of energy is uh, taken away by the work piece it's good only good amount of heat generated in tertiary zone not total it's good only because tool should not get destroyed work piece here and there is destroyed okay because tool is trying to manufacture so many work pieces so here in this case work piece will be taking away the maximum amount of energy because i am telling this thing in detail because this will be the things where uh, these exams will be concentrating on hope you are understanding this good next is tool failure how tools are failing tools are uh, how do you know the tool is failing you don't know right machining is happening you don't know you, you are not you are not live monitoring lively you have, you have to have some methods and say that okay oh fine this is where the tool has failed you have to tell how do you say there are some parameters indicating satisfactory satisfactory of machine if at all if this satis satisfactoriness is not satisfied then your machining is not happening properly and the primary reason is your tool tool might got weird off and it got failed so what are those parameters the parameters are surface finish as you keep on doing the machining suddenly you see some some bad surface finish is generated sometimes if you see that indicates tool has failed because tool has weird off hence tool has tool geometry is disturbed so you have to do something either you regrind the tool or maybe you discard the tool and take a new tool right so that is finish one is one of the tool parameter parameter that will say the satisfactoriness of the machining next forces in machining how do, I, i already told you how do you measure forces you measure forces by dynamometer right and if at all the dynamometer is like your or lively online online measure is happening suddenly you see there is a spike in cutting forces if there is there is some spike in cutting force it means that your tool geometry has lost that is the reason why you work. in the first place why did you have given good tool geometry good rake angle relief angle all these things you have given so that your cutting has to be performed with minimal forces so which leads to minimal power but if dynamometer reading is spiking up it means that the tool has weird off one of the I mean, it's not sure that tool has weird off but one of the reason why the forces are increasing is because of tool wear next power consumption of course this uh, tool power uh, uh, cutting force and power consumption are all in direct proportion obviously so obviously if you have instead of having uh, dynamometer you have ammeter it is uh, rating your current and suddenly you have seen a spike in your ammeter and the, the current consumption is increasing it has increased the reading is moving very fast so you see well, because till now it was very fine suddenly why it is increased well, obviously there is a reason that reason is tool tool wear tool wear or tool failure and the last but not least is color of the chip 
that's a very good uh, metric generally the color of chip will be blue or metallic some kind of greenish some kind of colors will be coming bluish mostly uh, you might have seen that have you seen this bluish color chips but have seen this or maybe metallic chips but if the chips are coming out to be very burnt or a black color and that means that some kind of good heat is generated why heat is generated because your tool geometry has not been maintained properly it means that your tool is weighed off it means that tool is failed yes in late turning you might have seen that you are right okay so all these things are very important parameters for satisfactory satisfactoriness of machine fine now let's discuss what kind of wears it can happen there are two different wears what are two different wears in the diagram you can see one is your crater wear another is another is what flank wear this is your flank wear crater wear is happening on the rake face please remember this is called your rake face the top one this is your crater wear it is kind of a some kind of a pit some kind of you know uh, depth that is generated because of the chip action because chip is flowing on this rake face clearly told chip is flowing on this rake face like this chip is flowing chip is flowing right as the chip is flowing okay let me draw the diagram of the chip is being flowing today you have to excuse me with these diagrams because my wacom pad is not working properly the chip is flowing like this right and uh, if you see uh, if you see uh, from the side view side view this is your alpha b right and if you see from this view this is alpha s side rake this is your back rake this is your alpha b okay chip is flowing like this as the chip is flowing it will make some kind of indentation in this face and that is what is called your crater wear and this is place this place if you see this place if you see this will be your relief angle theta and because of that on this flank this kind of wear will happen because of the tool is rubbing off with the workpiece crater wear is happening because chip is rubbing off the tool flank wear will occur because workpiece is workpiece is rubbing with the tool so that is what you have to understand here let me read this it is mainly due to rubbing action between tool and workpiece i told you clearly flank wear is between tool and workpiece both the wears are happening due to adhesion and abrasion okay crater wear crater wear it is formed on the rake face of the tool at short distance because you see there is some kind of a short distance it's not exactly at the edge there is some distance if you see there is some distance here at a, because the chip is not directly uh, digging its action directly immediately at that point it's little away from the edge that's what a very important point at short distance from the edge by action of chip particle flowing over the surface that is what is crater wear next okay you want that you, now you okay now you, can you guess okay you understand sir speed is in which direction motion of cut is in which direction okay fine so tell me i'll i'll make three directions you tell me which in which direction this speed should happen this direction or this direction one and two feet which one anyone who can say in which direction speed is happening one obviously speed is happening in this direction then only chip will go in this direction okay and depth of cut will be in this direction the us is it okay are you clear navin are you yeah is it clear whatever doubt that we are you are asking is it clear okay right next and let's go to the million dollar equation it's very important i don't know people are very much obsessed with this equation and they'll be asking every time one question on this thing sweet t power n is equal to constant tailors have uh, Invented or derived this formula. It derived in the sense it's an empirical formula. He has invented this formula. How? What is this formula? V is nothing but cutting velocity. T is nothing but tool life. N is nothing but con uh, tool life exponent. C is nothing but constant. That is, if that will depend upon workpiece and the tool. Okay. 
sir how did you find out that is v t power n is equal to constant is it not v by t is it v, t, v v into e to the power of t it can be anything no sir why it is v to the power of n only because he performs a certain experiment he has taken a tool he has taken some work base first he kept velocity constant then he did so many experiments he got all different different t's then again different velocity different different t's different velocity different different t's then he understood that different different t means different t for different velocity different t for different velocity different t for different velocity like that he obtained certain amount of data then he tried to fit an curve for that and then he found out that the curve is little bit like this and then he found out that it should be some some kind of a rectangular hyperbola but more or less it will depend upon workpiece and the because different different workpiece is right workpiece and the tool because of that he has given this n and that will be called a constant and it's a very basic formula and very important formula that is v t power n is equal to constant cutting velocity tool life this is where we have to find out the tool life we are trying to find the tool life how many minutes the tool will last last in the sense will withstand that kind of a cutting uh, you know process right and then then what happened fine then he th he thought that not only velocity cutting velocity speed and depth of cut are also affecting the tool life if you are giving large speed suddenly if you are giving large speed the tool life is coming down if you are giving more depth of cut also tool life is coming down so what he did he the, the, he modified the equation and the tool life uh, modified to uh, tell us tool life has become like this that is v t power n is there already from the previous equation f to the power of a plus d to the power of b is equal to constant this is what is the equation f to the power of a and d to the power of b is equal to constant this is what is the Taylor's tool life equation that is modified. Okay, and f is depth of speed and d is depth of cut. A, b are some kind of constants like tool life exponents only. Right. So we are getting next economics. Here uh, we are trying to optimize. What did we see here in Taylor? Velocity is important. This velocity is important. Neither I can't increase the velocity. Now I can't decrease the velocity. If I decrease the velocity, I'll take too much. It, uh, the machining time will take too much. The time of machining will be so much. For one, you slowly are cutting. It will take days. It will take decades to complete one part if you're doing very slowly. So that's not allowed. Neither you can't increase the velocity. If you're increasing the velocity, what happens? Tool is not working properly. Tool will get tool will get weird fast, and your tool life is very low. As tools are getting weird off, your tool life is strong, and tool or tool you have to discard so many tools. You are wasting so much amount of money. Here, in in a in a way, I mean, if you're decreasing in the velocity also, machining time is more, and people are not patient, right? You are losing money because you, nobody will come to you. Whereas this fellow will take so much time. So, because of that, your velocity that you are trying to put here, cutting velocity that you are giving, trying to give, should be optimum. They were where economics will come. So you have to have some criterion. So which criterion you are trying to follow and trying to trying out to find some optimum velocity. That is what is important. So two criterions. One is to maximize your to minimize your production cost. In the sense, when the, whatever parts you are trying to produce, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, all the things, you have to minimize your production cost. Then only you get more profit. Am I right? And then. Another criteria is criteria is maximize your production rate. Maximize your production rate. Production rate in the sense what? For one hour, how many items you are producing? Here, first is here in this in this thing you are concentrating on rupees cost. In this in this thing you are trying to uh, concentrate on production number of parts. Number of parts. In, in this case, number of parts should be more in a specific amount of time. In this case. Cost should be low for specific amount of items that you are trying to produce. So these two criteria you are trying to follow. Uh, you have you are trying to uh, what you say uh, enforce into your economics, and then you are trying to find out this cutting optimum cutting velocity. And what is that formula? I'll show you. So we obviously can see here, machining cost is very high if your optimum velocity is low. Machining cost is very high because you are doing very slowly, so it will be very costly. And you are trying to increase, increase, increase the velocity. Fast per piece will come down. But what is happening? Your tool cost is increasing. Tool cost is increasing. Regrading cost is increasing. What is tool changing cost? 
if completely if the tool is getting worn off you have to discard it some here and there geometry is changed then you go to grinding and you adjust the geometry here so in both the cases one case what blue line what what blue line is green line is saying machine cost will come down good you are producing it very fast but what is happening on the other hand your tool life is tool wear is happening tool wear is happening your tool changing time immediately you are trying to change or sometimes you are repeatedly you are going in changing uh, you are regrinding your tool that's not good so somewhere you have to get uh, some kind of a you know a sweet spot that is what is called your uh this optimum point where this is total cost curve right this is total cost curve and this is the cost at which your minimum cost is this is the point at which minimum cost is occurring and this is the point at which your optimum velocity is occurring right so that is what is important fine so what are the formulas forget about all these things and the final formula so what are the important cost you have to understand one cost is machining cost one cost is machining cost another cost is idle cost another change another cost is tool changing cost next is all the things you don't worry these are all some derivative things the important thing that you have to follow remember is that nothing but first we have seen machining cost idle cost tool changing cost all the things we have so in every case if you see in all the cases i have written all the costs as a function of velocity this is a function of velocity and here there is no velocity so obviously this term will go if you are derivating with velocity and again here also the c3 is a function of velocity right and here also as we have seen c4 is a function of velocity it means that c1 c3 c4 all these three are functions of velocity that is the reason why this total cost is function of velocity so that is a variable so that is a variable we have to find out so what do we do we do the differentiation that is dcv by dc by dv and we found out that to be equal to 0 then this is what is called v optimum and v optimum is nothing but c by ce that is what this is nothing but okay here i have introduced these things c is nothing but cost per regrind for one regrind how much is the cost that is incurring right and cm is machining time for each item this is cost per regrind this is your machining time and this is your tool changing time tc tool changing how much time it is going to take for you to change the tool and this exponent your tool life exponent that is vt to the power of n is equal to constant on that n is this this that means this the same is here also and this is the constant what is that vt to the power n is equal to c constant on this constant is this this constant is this okay fine so now what is the final formula c by c by cm plus tc into 1 by n minus 1 to the power of n very important formula sometimes this formula itself can be given in options they will give they last to ask you to pick up the right formula and this is what is t right this is what is t t that is what is this formula why of course why v optimum is equal to c by t optimum to the power of n so v optimum t optimum to the power of n is equal to constant what is t optimum t optimum is this the denominator the denominator itself i'm writing there so you remember the top one once you remember top one and the this part the part which is inside this exponent is this okay fine let's proceed now and this is what is what this is for total minimum cost now let's go for maximizing the production rate so this is for the maximizing the production rate and the formula is this the formula is this that is c by 1 minus 1 by n minus 1 into tc this is what tool changing time tool changing time tc tool changing time and here we have two extra costs here those are ce regrinding cost and this is what is your machining cost okay and this is your tool changing time fine so here yeah, these two formulas are very important make sure that you write them write these things into your short notes and try to you know memorize them as if you don't as you are, because there is no other way we can't escape it you have to remember it next here also you can remember this two formulas the optimum for the maximum production rate please do do not confer uh, do not confuse in this about this thing in your uh, examinations okay because both criteria are there mean total minimum cost maximum production rate okay and these are some we will do all the things when we are discussing
Next. Next is nothing but milling. Okay. So till here in the till previous slide, we have discussed about single point cutting tools, isn't it? We have discussed about single point cutting tool. Mostly we have discussed about lathe only. We started uh, something on layer AS system, OR system. Then we went on to see the cutting velocities, then cutting forces, then um, uh, temperature, where the temperature is, uh, heat generation, then tool wear, what are the parameters, tool life, all the things we have discussed and everything is about single point cutting tool. And that's the end of metal cutting for single point. Now we are entering into machining operations. In machining operations, from here we'll be discussing about multi point cutting tools. Yes, multi point cutting tool is used in milling. Of course, milling will use multi point cutting tool. So, as, as written here, what is there here? Milling machines of various types are widely used for following purposes using proper cutting tools called milling cutters. A flat or everything can be done in milling. What, what they have written here is that good amount of operations can be performed by milling. Good amount of cutting operations can be performed by milling. Milling cutters. All these things have been written here. You can split two parts. You can split one, one thing into two halves itself. Right? And you can do anything. Now, anything in the sense, mostly you use it for flat surfaces. In lathe, and now we, we reduce cylindrical surfaces. Right? Cylindrical surfaces. In milling, we are trying to produce flat, which are in vertical, horizontal, or inclined. We, which plane, it doesn't matter, but we are trying to produce some flat surfaces. That's very important. Right? Next, this is what is uh, up milling and down milling. It's very important to understand what is up milling and down milling. What is the difference between up milling and down milling? Here, if you see, the bottom one is workpiece. Okay, let me take the pointer. The bottom one is the workpiece. And the top one is the milling cutter. And these are your teeth, milling cutter teeth. One, two, three, four, these are the cut, cutting edges, cutting tips. One. How many cutting uh, points are there here? One, two, three, four, five. So many are there. But here, what are visible? Four or four cutting points are visible. And if your cutting point cutter is rotating in this direction, in anti-clockwise direction. Okay, let me let me write that. Let me take some ink which is anti-clockwise, like this. It is rotating like this cutter. And your workpiece is moving in this direction. And if you see this point. The cutter will try to go like this. So the tangential velocity will be in this direction. Tangential velocity will be in that direction. And the cutting motion, the workpiece is moving in this place. And one more important point that you have to notice here is that in lathe machining, your workpiece is rotating and tool is given the depth of cut and feed. Isn't it? Depth of cut and feed. Isn't it? In this case, in this milling, in this milling, workpiece is given, right? Workpiece is given feed and depth of cut, and tool is rotated here. Tool is rotated here. Tool is given feed and depth of cut. Workpiece is rotated reverse, right? We should get that point. Important point. Okay, fine. Let's get to. Let's get back to the points. Here, what did we see? the cut, cutting movement is going in right direction the workpiece is moving in left direction right now if these two are both in opposite direction then this is called up milling okay workpiece is giving tangential velocity in this direction and cutting motion is happening in this direction left direction both are in opposite direction Workpiece and cutter are in opposite direction. That's the reason why it is called up milling. In other case, you see the cutter is rotated in this direction clockwise, right? And if you see the tangential velocity is in direction, and workpiece also is moving in this direction, and both are moving in same direction, hence it is called down milling. Okay. Hope you are getting the point. Okay. Now. You understood up milling and down milling. Very important points here is that in up milling, you see the chip thickness is starting from zero, and it is all the shaded part here is 
chip thickness okay this is chip actually and it is re starting from a zero thickness to maximum thickness maximum thickness and here it is starting from a maximum thickness because the tool is coming from here and it is going to zero that is an important point very important point right another important point is that you see here here it is starting here it is starting from zero to maximum good but but what will happen the one minute okay so it there is there might be a chance that this this is going and it's taking taking away the chip this this and already machine part is this this is the already machine part and there is a chance that this tip is touching this already machine part and disturbing its surface roughness here that is one of the disadvantage in up milling but that will that thing will not happen here because it is already taken away from here anyways it is it is going away it is going away here the, then this part this point will go away and it won't touch the next touching point will be from on the unmachined part not on the machine part so the surface finish produced here might be a problem here that is a problem and one more thing is backlash what is backlash because you see both are moving in same direction both are moving in same direction if both are moving in direction if you see in gears this 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 is what is your invalid profile this is your gear profile if you, if you have seen if you are if you are if you have done theory of machines this is your gear profile right in gear in gears how why are why you are touching about gears because how they are rotating these milling milling cutters are rotating with the, with the help of some kind of gear box only right in the gear box you have some gears obviously because of that gear uh, reduction ratio and all these things only you trying to manage this cutting rotation cutter rotations and if at all your gears are having this thing called backlash backlash is nothing but some kind of a mismatch between two 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 teeth between the driver and driven driver and driven and that backlash will cannot be eliminated in this but backlash can be eliminated how because it is tight it is tight it will tight keep tight because both are both are clamping against each other so there, there is no possibility of backlash but Yeah, this is going in this direction. This also is going in this direction. So the possibility of backlash is very high in the case of down milling. So one advantage in up milling is there is no backlash. Disadvantage: bad surface finish. Bad surface finish is not good. So for uh, backlash, this is good. Surface finish is good, but backlash this is not good. So that is what is the difference between up milling and down milling. So that is what I have written it here. You can clearly read. in down milling though the cut starts with full chip thickness this is about down milling okay the cut gradually reduces to zero this helps eliminating the feed marks presenting in the case of up milling of this feed mark these are this feed marks are there in the up milling that is why the, the surface finish is not good in up milling but these feed marks are not present in the down milling hence consequently better surface finish in the case of down milling in up milling operation chip thickness varies from minimum to maximum i told you and before machining cutting edge will rub over the finished part the cutting edge will rub over the finished part and here so that surface finish produced is very poor that is a good bad point in up milling if the backlash error is there in the picture in the picture or maybe in the gear gear mechanism wherever the backlash is there wherever the gear mechanism is there it has no significance in up milling obviously because these two are in opposite direction there won't be any significance of backlash at all there is no concept of backlash but in this down milling because of fixtures are opposite tension there is none but when when you going for down milling obviously backlash will be a problem that is what you have to understand fine let's proceed down milling cannot be used unless the machine has backlash eliminator and jb table jigs have to have to have to be tight so you have to eliminate you have to check for backlash and then only you have to start machining next now next discuss about different types of these are also different types only but these are basically about the basic uh, the, uh, categorization up milling and down milling now it will depend upon what are the movements 
what are the uh, work piece movement and how you are trying to cut the fat that is important so the types of milling process are three types one is slab milling next is face milling another is anyone fat slab milling face milling anyone you can tell any other millings because i am just wanted to waken you up i am keeping on speaking i want you to speak slab milling face milling any other milling that you have heard of guys Have you heard of any time end milling? End milling? Yes or no? No, end milling didn't have. So you didn't hear end milling. Okay, fine. Okay, let let me discuss then. Let me discuss. Okay, fine, fine, good. Let me discuss. Okay, here we have workpiece. This is your workpiece, and I already clearly mentioned in the previous slides that. It will this milling is mainly used for producing flat surfaces, be it vertical, horizontal, inclined. It doesn't matter. It is producing horizontal surface. The shaded part is red color. Here, what is this workpiece? And this is your surface that has been generated by milling. And this is your milling cutter, and it is rotating with respect to this axis. Okay. And if, please remember, if, 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 if. If your line, this line, this axis of cutter, right? This axis of cutter is parallel to the workpiece generated, workpiece, you know, surface generated. Is it not parallel? Yes. This is this, and these are parallel. Am I right? Yes or no? The this line and this surface are parallel to each other, isn't it? Yes. If these two are parallel to each other, then it is called slab milling. Then it is called slab milling. Please remember, this axis of cutter is perpendicular to the surface generated, a surface produced by the milling. If these two are parallel to each other, then this is called slab milling, or it is also known as peripheral milling. Very important. Next, next is. Ah, uh, these are different type of slab millings. You see, axis is this, surface is this. Axis and surface are parallel. Axis and surface generated is parallel. Axis and surface uh, generated is parallel. If axis and surface generated is parallel, then these are called all are called peripheral milling. But different different operations are being done. Here you are making some kind of a slot. Here you are making some kind of you know T shape. Here it's called strand milling, and you are trying to Make two halves or two parts. One one part and two parts. Then you are splitting it. So all the things are called peripheral millings or slab millings. So what about face milling? So this is face milling. If you see this shaded part is the milling. Uh, is the milling uh, workpiece the face of the workpiece? And you see the cutter is rotating in this direction, and the cutter's axis is like this. Now this cutter's axis and the face. Are perpendicular to each other, isn't it? Are you understanding this diagram? This is line. This line is perpendicular to this face. If let us assume that this plane is x y plane, this plane is x y plane, and this is your z axis. Obviously, z axis is always perpendicular to x y plane, isn't it? That's the reason why the axis of cutter is parallel, perpendicular to the workpiece that has been generated, the surface of the workpiece. See, in the face milling, the axis of cutter rotation is perpendicular to the workpiece surface to be machined. That is known as face milling. Is it clear? The difference between slab milling and face milling. Very important that you have to understand this. Yes, very good. Very good. Next. Next is end milling. End milling is mix of both. It is mix of both. In end milling, the cutter called end mill has diameter less than the workpiece. The mill has helical carried on the cylindrical surface or used to pocket. So, if you see, it is rotating. Here, if you you can see this is kind of kind of a face milling. But what is what it is generating? It is generating a slot. It's not a face milling. It's a end milling. The cutter is smaller than the workpiece, and you are making some kind of a slot keys. 
these are called n-mini. This is called n-mini. If you see some kind of a uh, some kind of a um, uh, milling cutter which diameter which which diameter is less than the width of the workpiece, and that is known as n-mini. Very important. Okay. Next. And this formula and all are not important for you. And yes, this is very important formula. Very important formula. Machining time is given by this formula. What is machining time? Machining time is nothing but length of cut. This is length of cut. And this is speed. This is number of rotations or you can say RPM. This is speed in mm per revolution. Please remember speed is in mm per revolution. Length is in mm of meter, whatever it is, you have to convert it into mm. Right? This is what is machining time. Let's say if, if I want to machine, I use some cutter, I use some slab milling, or maybe I'll use some end milling, or maybe I will use some face milling, whatever it is. If I'm if I'm having big cutter, obviously this is face face milling. If if your cutter is rotating and it is going in this direction. So the length, length of cut, let's say assume that length of this thing is L, let us say. But so length is this, how much how much from where from where is the starting point and where it is ending, that is very important. So the starting point to ending point of the cutter is length of cut and the feed that you are trying, what is speed? How much time for one revolution of this cutter, for one revolution of this cutter, how much feed has been given onto this workpiece? That is called feed. How much distance it is moving in left hand side? Let's say in this in this case, obviously it has to move in left hand side. Cutter will be keeping on rotating here and it is constant like this. Workpiece has to move. Workpiece is given feed, no? So workpiece will be moving in right side direction. So one rotation of cutter, how much distance it, it will be moving on the right hand side? That is called as feed. That is the reason why mm in the right hand side per one revolution of the cutter. So that is what is feed. And that is what is given. And n is nothing but RPM of cutter. How many rotations it is making per minute. That is what is used. So if you see, it will be time only. If you see time, time is what? L by Fn. What is this? If you see the units, units. L is what? L is mm. What is uh, uh, F feed is meter mm per revolution. And what is n? n is revolution per minute. Right? And if you see revolution, revolution get cancelled, mm, mm cancelled. So it is 1 by 1 by m, 1 by 1 by minute. That is minutes. So that's why t is in minutes. Okay? You have to understand that. Is it clear, guys? Is it clear? Machining time is length of cut divided by feed into number of revolutions per minute of cut. And this and all we can discuss. Next, we'll discuss about drilling. So, what is drilling? I told you drilling is having two cutting points, isn't it? I told you in the previous uh, lecture somewhere. I told you that drilling will have two cutting points. This is not cutting point. No, wrong. These are cutting points. These are cutting points. This is not cutting point. From here only cutting will happen and it will go into some kind of helical tubes. These are the cutting. This is the point at which the cutting action will take place. Okay. Drilling is the cutting operation of producing circular hole. Obviously, you know that drilling will make holes in the workpiece by using a rotating cutter called drill. All these things we have seen. And this is a drill bit. And if you if you see let me put the points and zoom it for you. This is your cutting point. So see, these two are your cutting points. And this is what is your centering. This is your center. And cutting action will take. And this, these are called flutes. These are called flutes. And this through flutes, this drilling, this chips will be. Why the flutes are provided? Anyone, anyone can say why this helical, helical kind of space is provided? Anyone? Why in drilling the helical fluids? Yes, excellent. I mean for chip flow. Why? Because when you're going in depth, when you're going into the depth, from where does the remote part will come out? 
the good part has to come out right with lathe and uh, milling uh, the chips will come and they'll be flowing here and there but if drilling if as the drill, drill bit is going inside into the workpiece from where the workpiece uh, the workpiece material that I mean the chips should come out the chips will come out through this through this twisting twisted or maybe through this helical grooves those are called flutes okay Fine. Next, it is uh, simple. I mean, obviously, it is very simple. You are just trying to put some kind of drill, and then you, this is what you you know all the things. It's a simple. You give feed motion in this downward direction, <coughs> rotation to the cutter, and workpiece is constant here. Workpiece will be stationary, and after it, the thing will get drilled. Hole will be formed. Okay. And if you see here, when it is drilling, when it is rotating, when this cutter is rotating, when this cutter is rotating, what is happening? Cutter is rotating. What is happening? At the center, obviously velocity is zero. Why? Why velocity is zero at center? Anyone who can say this? Why velocity is center is zero at this at this point? Anyone? Because there is no radius, no. Obviously, this is rotating. It is having some omega, let's say. Then you have to have some velocity, no? Velocity is what v is equal to r into omega. Where is radius? Omega is there, man, but where is radius? Let's say if this is this tool is rotating. Let's say you are standing at exactly at the center. Will you feel that you are rotating? Will you feel that you are having some velocity, some tangential velocity? No, you don't have any tangential velocity. As you move away from the center only, you will get some tangential velocity. So here, that is why the velocity profile will be like this. At center, exactly there is no velocity. as you are approaching away from the center or maybe from the axis of rotation to away from the axis of rotation then you will feel that the uh, you know the velocity is getting increased and as velocity is in fact it will get cutting velocity will happen and that chip will you know move in the form of spirals into the flutes and will come out to the twisted spiral flutes okay fine next and this is Uh, and these are these two are cutting points. The angle between these two is known as point angle, and it is given by two beta. The angle between these two, these two faces, these two edges you see here, this is known as point angle, and it is given by two beta. Why two beta? Because you can, it is having some axis of symmetry. That's why I am written as two beta. Please do understand. It is two beta. If you want, you can take as beta. Then when you are doing calculations, you can take beta by two, beta by two. But for ease of calculation, I have taken as two beta. And if you see here. Now let me zoom this. Okay, and if you see here, this this is the tangent of that uh, twist. This is the tangent of twist. That there are twists that are happening. Are happening, no? Where is that? There is some twist happening. There is some twist here, no? And this twist, if you take a tangent, that is what they have taken a tangent. Try line, and this is your axis of, you know. Rotate. I mean, this is your axis parallel to that. You take an angle here, and this angle is known as helix angle because the angle at which this twist is this twist is happening is known as helix angle. Helix angle, or because the angle at which this helix is formed, the twist is what is twist? Twist is nothing but helix, and that is what is called helix. Helix angle. Very important. And these are called flutes. If you are seeing, these are called flutes. And here, if you see, there is some kind of a ground ground that has I mean, they have grounded here. And that is known as lip relief angle, but these are all not very important. Important points are helix angle and the point angle. Very important. This is tool diameter, point angle, shank, you know, neck, fluid body, body, overall length. And if you see from the top view, if you see from the front view here, in the, this is a temporary view. You see this kind of you know, and this is the places. This is where you know, this is all very in detailed uh, geometry of your uh, drilling pit. If you have seen drill pit. with your uh, uh, with your uh, drill bit in your hand then you you should have appreciated this it's having so many so many complicated geometries and each and every geometry is very important for the sake of drilling proper drilling okay and you can make two different type of holes one is through hole it means you can directly passing from top to top to bottom and you can you are you are, you are not leaving anything you, from this side if you are seeing you can see the other side that is called through hole Blind hole is nothing but you are stopping the hole in between. That is not. That is nothing but if you are seeing from the other from one side, you can't see the other side. That is what is your blind hole. Two different type of holes can be made by using drill. 
and uh, like same way this is this is the formulas you have to remember you have to memorize them the formulas here are cutting velocity cutting speed is given by pi dn obviously um, omega is 2 pi you know it's r omega right so omega is what this is uh, 2 pi n something like that 2 pi n into r or you can write 2 pi n uh, into uh, uh, d by 2 2 2 gets cancelled this is pi dn like that okay so fine so this is what is your rotation happening and the cutting velocity is pi dn because this is the point at which cutting action is occurring and this is the maximum velocity and my minimum zero velocity is occurring at this this point and this is the where the cutting action is taking place that is the reason it's called cutting speed pi dn and feed rate is how much our feed rate is giving how much depth how much how fast you are taking inside you will be taking slowly or taking fast is very important that is what is speed and depth of cut is obviously d by 2 this is what is your depth of cut okay next and material removal rate this is the final formula this i i didn't make in derivation this is the final formula that is pi d square what is d here diameter of drill bit pi d square by 4 into feed of drill bit into number of rotations of drill bit that is what is your mrr and machining time obviously i told you length what is the length here length is nothing but this is your length length of cut this is your length and this is your feed that you're giving and this is your rpm and you're giving so obviously time is equal to machining time machining time for a drill is equal to length of uh, length that you're traveling downwards into feed that you're giving here into n rpm how many rotations are making per minute is your drill bit rotation that is what is your machining time right and these are the formula and one more thing sometimes in examinations what will happen is that you will say that I have, I have given some kind of clearance this is what is called clearance here if you see this is what is clearance and also he says that I have made I have given the clearance after machining also so your drill bit has started here it can't end here if it is if it is ending here it is like this and that is not a full hole right it has to come to this point then only it is full hole right full hole very important so you have to start here and you have to end here so that this thing will come here then only drilling is full through hole then only full hole will form and so where is starting point starting point is here ending point is here so that is what the drill has traveled so how much is this this is 2 plus 50 plus 2 and you have to calculate this height this height is some x they have calculated so 50 plus 2 plus 2 plus x and that x you can calculate by using some kind of you know geometry because this point angle is point angle, point angle is given as 118 so and this 59 here and your drill diameter is given that is what uh, 15 so that's why half is 7.5 you can easily calculate this x they calculated x as uh, 4.51 so x is 4.51 so total length of cut is 50 plus 52 plus 2 plus 4.1 that is 58.51 and divided by speed is what 0.2 mm per revolution and rpm is 500 is absurd that values so you'll get this ms 35.1 seconds okay so these things we'll we'll be doing when we're discussing about we'll be discussing some problems okay next next is nothing but grinding so where are we using this grinding we are using this grinding as a finishing process isn't it we are using it for a finishing process in the sense we have some grinding wheel and this grinding wheel is rotated and this is given some kind of you know uh, this kind of operation like this zigzag operation means to and fro to and fro to and fro okay and you are providing some food coolant because grinding wheel is trying to generate some heat heat because some rear is taking place tool the workpiece cutting is taking place in the form of some more some some kind of a wear tool uh, workpiece wear in the sense tool also will be getting weird obviously grinding will also get weird but mostly as grinding wheel is stronger than the workpiece the workpiece will be getting removed more that is the reason why this uh, and also it is removed in the form of small 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 particles not some kind of a chips very small small powdered particles and that is the reason why based on the uh, grain structure on the uh, grinding wheel will be getting the surface finish if you are having very fine structure fine grains on the grinding wheel then good, good surface finish ultra surface finish will get if your grinding wheel uh, 
the grain structures, all these things are not very fine. They are coarser in nature. Then your surface finish is not very good, but yet you get some surface finish, which is not good as fine structure. That's it. Very important. Next. Okay, this is this is what is the grinding operation. I'll explain this thing in this kind of this beautiful picture here. What is happening actually? This red color ones, if you see, these red color ones are your abrasives. These are the particles which are removing your material, workpiece material in the form of small small chips, small small powdered chips. So while making grind material, these abrasive particles are mixed with bonding material, which are in this color. These are bonding material, which are in blue color. These are all blue color, no? These are all bonding materials. And also there are some kind of voids. Some voids are there, some pores are there inside in the grinding wheel. So what are what is grinding wheel consisting of? Grinding wheel is consisting of abrasive particles, bonding materials, and voids. And now what happens initially, these particles will try to impinge onto the workpiece and they'll try to remove the workpiece material. And as you keep on removing, these tips also will be getting weighed off. Once these tips are getting weighed off, it will come in contact with this bonding material and voids. And as these voids and bonding materials are coming into contact, some kind of rubbing action will take place and voids and this bonding material will remove and another tip, another uh, abrasive particle layer will be coming into action. And again grinding will take place. Again, as you keep on moving, grinding will, will be also will be reducing its diameter as you keep on uh, doing uh, these things. So this is called self sharpening. What is self sharpening? Because you are trying to get to the another layer of your abrasive particles so that uh, after uh, this initial layer of your abrasive particles are getting numb, the next layer is coming into action after certain amount of time and that is called self sharpening. Okay. So this is what is your uh, grinding operation. So initially some abrasive particles are coming in contact with the workpiece, they will remove, they will get uh, numb or maybe the cutting points are not good enough to cut. Then some kind of friction is generated because of the friction bonding material will be removed and another layer of abrasive particles will be coming into picture and the cycle proceeds as your grinding wheel is reducing its diameter. At certain point of time, you remove the grinding wheel, discard it, you keep new grinding wheel. That's it. Is it okay? Okay. Good. Let me have water on it. Okay. Let's proceed. Okay. So in grinding wheel, we have these things. One is nothing but this is your one abrasive particle. This is another abrasive particle and this is your grinding wheel actually. So there are so many abrasives, okay. Now, if these abrasive particles, let us assume this, let us take only two abrasive particles here, one and two. And the distance between the two cutting of edges or two abrasive particles is known as structure. And if the space between these two uh, uh, cutting edges is more, then it is called open. And the space between the two is less, then it is called closed less occupied space and open space structure is, is, is used for tactile materials and closed is used for brittle materials closed is used for brittle materials why because if at all let's say for the open if you are using open structure for brittle let us assume if you are using brittle sorry, sorry if at all you are using closed for Brittle. Okay, if you are using closed for brittle, closed for, so, so sorry, this is ductile now. Okay, closed. Let us use it closed. Closed for ductile. These are very near. Ductile, what will happen? Continuous tips will be formed. Continuous, continuous tips. And these tips will keep accommodated in between this structure and it will close it off. And then there is no cutting action that is taking place. And also, as these are continuous tips, because of rotation, centrifugal force will be away from the rotation. Because this is rotating like this. Centrifugal force will be away, away from this thing. And the chip will also not come out. But if you are using open structure, there is some good amount of space that is having. That space will be allowed not to block this tool and also it will come out easily. 
through the centrifugal force. So the chips will be falling apart, it will come out. And for brittle, there is no, no, no need of open structure. You are trying to, because small, small particles are no continuous chips will be formed. So, what you do, you can use you know, less space between the two cutting edges, and the chips, small, small chips which are formed, will not be getting stuck in between the uh, two cutting edges and they'll come out because of the centrifugal action. So, this is the important point that you have to not take note of that is open structure and flow structure open structure for ductile structures ductile materials ductile workplace materials okay and closed structures are for brittle materials so this is what is iso so in the same we have seen right in the uh, tool signature we have seen right alpha b alpha s theta <coughs> Theta I, theta S, C, C, S, you know, you remember all these things we have discussed, right? So, this is two signatures in the same way. One minute, guys. Okay, am I audible, guys? Hello? Okay. Fine. So, here, ah, yeah, we are discussing about this. What are this? These are the designation for grinding it. Okay. So this is kind of this kind of uh, designation will be used. That is what is your standard organizations, right? So the prefix is not important. It is uh, company specific. That is different or manufacturer specific. Here, this is what is abrasive type. Which type of abrasive are you using? It can be aluminum. A is aluminum oxide, C is silicon carbide. All these things are very harder in nature. What kind of abrasive particle you are using to machine the material? And this is your grain size. What is the size of each abrasive grain? It can be coarse, thicker, medium, little smaller, and fine, very smaller. Very, very, very fine. These are very fine. So as the number is increasing, what is happening? The grain, the grain size is getting very smaller and smaller. The number of abrasive size increasing means the grain size is getting smaller and smaller. Understanding? Please do remember. It doesn't mean increasing this value doesn't mean that grain size is increasing. Increasing that value is mentioning that it is getting very fine. Very important. And then grade. What is the grade? Grade is nothing but what kind of bonding material you are using. Whether it is a soft bonding material, whether it is a hard bonding material. If you are around A, A to Z, right? If you are near A, B, C, D, it is soft. If you are going till L, L, M, and all these things are medium. Then if you are going to X, Y, Z, then it is hard. Hard bonding material. And this phi represents the structure. What is structure? The distance between two cutting edges. If it is, it is varying from 1 to some 15, 16, something around. So if it is... Uh, 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 one, it is dense. It means like lower the number, very, very small structure it is. If it is higher the number, very open it is. Open in the sense it is used for tactile materials. And what kind of a bonding uh, type you are using? What kind of a bonding type you are using? The bonding type is vitrified bond, silicate bond, rubber bond, resonate bond, shell like bond, oxychloride bond, all these kind of bonds. So the important point, important points that you have to note are this important five things. A, this is your abrasive type, grain size, grade of your bonding uh, material, and then um, uh, structure is your grain, the, the difference between, or the, the distance between two grains, or distance between two cutting edges, and B is bonding type. Okay. And this 23 is your manufacturer uh, number. This first and last are left for your companies thing or manufacturers uh, bill in which they'll fill it with something and they'll be referencing with their own uh, value okay and next is grinding ratio obviously i told you that here not only the workpiece is getting weird off or workpiece is getting material removal grinding wheel also will get material removal because cutting edges are coming into by action then again bonding material so somehow the grinding wheel also will be weird off as good as workpiece, but obviously volume of material that is removed from the workpiece 
should be more than the volume of the material that is removed from the grinding wheel. Obviously, grinding wheel should wear low. The wear of grinding wheel should be low compared to the wear that is happening onto the workpiece. Wear should happen on workpiece, of course, because that is why we are trying to do this grinding operation. We are removing some material and to generate good surface finish only we are doing that. So, so to mention how much wear is happening on grinding wheel, we have to understand this grinding ratio. Grinding ratio is given by volume of the material removed on the workpiece divided by the volume of the wear that is happening onto the grinding wheel. It is the volume of material that is removing removed with respect to grinding wheel. How much workpiece material you are trying to remove with respect to the removal of grinding wheel? That is very important. Let's say for uh, 100, uh, uh, let's say 10 mm cube of uh, volume is removed onto the grinding wheel. 100 mm cube of volume of workpiece is removed. So for this much of wear, so the what I'm saying is that the reference here is your wear of grinding wheel. Hope you are understanding this point. So if you are trying to draw the graph between, sorry, if you are trying to draw the graph between uh, this and the volume of the material removed here, here we can see that uh, this is the volume of material removed on the workpiece and this is the volume of the material that is removed on the grinding wheel. This is grinding wheel and this is workpiece. So obviously delta uh, x by delta y will be giving your slope delta x and delta y is your slope and that is what is your training ratio and it will generally vary from 75 to 125 hope you are getting this point yes or no am i okay am i am i right am i understand am i making you clear that <coughs> am i making the points clear here sir yes or no okay so what we'll do is what we'll do is that we will uh, we will do some problems and then we'll stop for then again we'll discuss something on uh, because we are keeping on discussing concepts it will be very boring so we'll uh, do some uh, problems and then we'll go to next topic that is non traditional machining process and of course i'll give you good differences between why it is for non traditional why these are called traditional and till now what we have discussed are all traditional conventional and we will discuss about some non conventional machining process then we'll discuss something about uh, jigsaw fixtures and all this stuff and then we'll close it off with the machining in the next class and then we'll start uh, metal forming okay we are going in a right, right pace so this is our sixth class right so we are, we have been allocated with 35 approximately 34 hours in that today if you are done we are if you are done with today's class then we are done with 12 hours so yeah so it is a, we are good, we are, we are in a very good pace approximately i'll take uh, around uh, 20 to 22 hours, 20 to 22 hours for all this uh, manufacturing part and the rest uh, which is left like 12 to 14 hours we will be discussing the industrial part. Okay, fine. As a, as a planning it is going all and it is going according to our plan. The thing is, are you understanding? Are you getting my points what I am getting, what I am telling? If I am going very fast, you tell me and I will come down. What do you say guys? Space is good, bad? Okay, should I come down a little bit? Should I increase a little bit? What do you say? The pace. Okay, so Prakar is good. Puna is saying good. What about others? Navin is here. Savin is here. Rushikesh is here. So please let me know the pace. If you are happy with that, then I'll be maintaining the same pace. If you're not happy, if you're saying that, sir, you need to pick up a little fast, I will go ahead. I'll go a little faster. If you say, sir, I'm not understanding what you're saying, you're speaking a little faster, then I'll go, I'll come down. It's, it'll depend up, it'll depend upon your understanding. So I see all of them are okay. Good, 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 perfect, perfect, great. Okay, fine. Anyways, I'll go with the same pace. If at all you're facing some trouble in between also, don't uh, don't worry, let me know. I'll, I'll go accordingly. So now what we'll do, you will we'll stop here with this, uh, what you say, the discussion on concepts. Let's solve some problems. They are very important. So in the previous class, we have discussed till here. Till here. Till here. Fine. So what we can discuss? We'll, yeah. Tell me, what is this answer? 11th one.
whatever the answer eleventh one do you remember that uh, equation that day you have you have derived something do you remember that equation yes or no please let me know anyone with the answer okay somebody is saying c and somebody is saying a let's see prabhakar is saying c rushikesh is saying a wow okay that day we have okay navin also is a okay so that day we have seen that is like we have seen uh, this is your cutting velocity right and this was your shear velocity your cutting velocity and this is what anyone what is this what is this another 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 thing anyone what is this velocity which velocity is this yes we have and and what is this angle what is this angle anyone shear shear is happening with respect to this base what is this angle is it not 5 excellent 5 and what is this angle here this angle this angle alpha excellent amazing sir amazing amazing and uh, we figured out we figured out that this is 5 by 2 minus 5 minus alpha or 5 by 2 minus alpha sorry one minute Minus phi minus alpha, isn't it? We have figured out this thing. Then what we have to tell? Opposite sine rule we have used. We have used sine rule. What was the sine rule? And of course this is what this is. Uh, this is 90 minus alpha. This is alpha, so this is 90 minus alpha. Please remember this. This angle. This angle is 90 minus alpha. This angle is 90 minus alpha. So V S by so V C that one no V C by V C by sine of phi by two minus phi minus alpha. Is equal to V F, right? V S V S is equal. We will write V S is nothing but your shear divided by sine ninety minus alpha is equal to V F by V F by that is V chip they wrote V chip divided by ah. Uh, E chip by what sine phi? Okay, so option is not right, man. No, no option is right here. Somebody will make a mistake. Okay, anyways, V C by cos phi minus alpha is equal to V S by cos alpha equal to V chip by sine phi, not sine alpha, sine phi. So I think this option should be phi. Then answer is C. Is it okay? Yeah. But please remember this is phi, not alpha. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. This is A. This is phi. Okay. Next one. Next one. Twelfth one. Formula. If you have to answer this, there is no backing out for this. You have to answer at any cost. Is it R sine alpha by one minus R cos alpha, or is it R cos alpha by one minus sine alpha, R sine alpha, or is it plus in the denominator? Very important. Yes, you are all right. The answer is A. Tan phi is equal to R cos alpha. By one minus R sine. Very important formula. Clearly, I mentioned you, mentioned to you in the previous class. What about next one?
this kind of questions will be asked you have to do this please let me know what is the next one Okay, Prakar is with B. What about others? Okay, I'll give you one minute. Please do fast. You should not make this much time. It's a very easy question. You have to solve it very fast. As soon as possible, you have to solve it. Come on, only one answer. What what happened? You have to use the same formula, right? The previous formula. Tan pi is equal to R 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 to Chip thickness ratio or cutting ratio, chip thickness ratio. Okay. So T they are saying chip thickness and unchip thickness are equal. The chip thickness, chip thickness and unchip thickness are equal. In the sense T1 by T2 is what? 1. Am I right? Yes or no? Yes. And this one is what? R. Substitute the formula. Now what is alpha? Alpha is given 0. Oh, easy. And then they are asking phi. So what is that? Tan phi is equal to r is 1, 1 into cos 0 phi 1 minus r sin r means 1 only, right? Sin 0. So sin 0 is 0 divided by 1. So what is that? Cos 0 is 1. So tan phi is how much? 1. Tan phi is 1. What is phi? 45 degrees, right? This the question. This kind of questions only we ask in exam. Come on. Answer is one. Let me write it clearly. Okay. So T one by T two is equal to one is equal to R. Tan phi is equal to R cos alpha by one minus R sin alpha. Alpha is given as zero. Phi is equal to tan inverse of R1 into sin cos 0 by 1 minus 1 into sin 0. That is tan inverse of 1, that is 45 degrees. Fine. Next one. Next one. Ah, uh, then a typical medical metal calcium operation using cutting tool positive right angle is 10. It was observed that shear angle is 20. The friction angle is they are asking. So you should use some analysis. Basically, what are we going to use? We are using Merchant circle analysis. What is the formula for Merchant circle analysis? Anyone? It is 2 pi plus beta minus alpha. He is asking beta only, right? So obviously you can write 2 pi plus beta minus alpha is equal to 90 degrees. Right? So what is okay? This is what? Pi. Right? 2 into 20 plus beta minus 10 is equal to 90. This leads to what? 90 is equal to 90 is equal to 40 minus 10, 30, 90 minus 30, 60. Answer is C. Easy question. Next one. 
नेक्स्ट वन फिफ्टींथ वन फिफ्टींथ वन सेम क्वेश्चन ओनली यू शुड सॉल्व द आंसर फॉर डिफरेंट एंगल हियर डू इट फास्ट सेम एज अबाउ बट हियर इज आस्किंग शेयर वैल्यू शेयर एंगल वैल्यू ही हेज गिवन फ्रिक्शन एंगल बीटा ही हेज गिवन रेक एंगल आल्फा आल्सो आल्फा इज ट्वेंटी फ्रिक्शन इज ट्वेंटी फाइव पॉइंट फाइव वॉट इज द आंसर ओके एवरी वन इज गेटिंग ए Is it A? I'm, I'm, I doubt it. The paka, no? Let me see. Twenty two fifty. I ninety minus five point five. It is some around eighty five. Eighty four point five. What is the answer? Come on, ah, it's B, no? It's B. It's not A, guys. Is it clear? Calculation mistake, ah? Huh? Do not make that. Two pi plus B minus alpha is equal to ninety. Two pi plus beta. That is twenty-five point five minus alpha twenty is equal to ninety. Two pi is equal to eighty four point five, and pi is equal to forty two point two five. Simple, no? Without calculator, without yeah, right. Okay, next one. Next one, come on. So what is asked? Think of it. You have to do this, man. Come on. In order to know depth of cut is given. I told you. Uh, depth of cut B. Cutting speed BC is given. Its chip thickness is seven point five. Chip velocity is asking. So if depth depth of cut, what is it? What is it equivalent to? Depth of cut is equivalent to what? I told you. If sub cut is equivalent to what? Hello. No, T one, isn't it? Uncut chip thickness. Yes. So chip thickness is how much? Chip thickness is how much? This is what is T two. And what is this? B C. What is asking? Bf. Now can you do? Now can you do? So what was what was our formula? Remember, R is equal to T1 by T2. That is equal to what? Anyone? Anyone? Is it not Vf by Vc? We have discussed. We have clearly discussed. Is equal to L2 by L1. We have discussed this, right? So this equation we have to use. So T1 by T2. What is T1? 0.5 by T2. That is 0.75. Vf. Vf. We have to find. Vc is 2. So what is Vf now? 
जीरो पॉइंट फाइव फाइव जीरो जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव यस यू आर राइट व्हाट इज द आंसर कैलकुलेट दिस टेल मी इट इज वन बाई जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव वी कैन राइट एज थ्री बाई फोर एंड फोर बाई थ्री फोर बाई थ्री इज आंसर Four by three is one point three three. You're right. Okay. Next. You have to use calculator for next one. You can't use. You can't directly do it. Some of the calculation. This kind of questions will be given, but um, oh, angles will be easily given. But try try this question. This is not let H L kind of question. Sometimes they might give this kind of questions. If oh, okay, in case if H L is giving this kind of questions where you have to do intensive calculation, for that moment you have to skip that question because you should not waste much time in solving the uh, calculate in doing the calculations because there might be some other questions which are very. Easy to answer, like conceptual and all. So, if you feel that it is very calculative, intensive, calculation intensive, for that moment you skip that question and then you come back after some time. Please do not waste your time there itself. For now, you solve this question. Tell me what is the answer. It is little bit of calculation, calculation intensive. What is the answer for the seventeenth one? The intermeshing operation chip thickness ratio R is given. Alpha is given. What is the value of shear strain? Gamma is asking. What was the formula for it? Gamma. Anyone? Gamma. Cot phi plus. Anyone? Tan phi minus alpha, isn't it? Yes. Excellent, Navin. You are right. So we have been given with R and alpha, but we don't know phi. First, find out phi. What is phi? Phi you can find out as tan phi is equal to R cos alpha by one minus R sin alpha. How much is phi? Tell me. Anyone who can say what is the value of phi? Please tell me. I'll give you one minute. Please use the calculator and tell me. Anyone? R zero point. Alpha is given. Phi you have to calculate. Alpha is ten degrees. R is zero point three. Tan phi, tan phi, man, tan phi, tan phi is equal to R cos alpha. By one minus R sin alpha. That's it. Is it okay? So once you calculate this value, then you can inverse tan inverse. You have to apply. Then you have to calculate phi tan inverse of some value. So according to my calculation here, that that R cos alpha by one minus R sin alpha, you will get as zero point three. One one around, and if we do the inverse, tan inverse, you'll get around seventeen point three degrees. Is your answer for phi? Then once you get phi, you substitute here. That is gamma is equal to cot cot seventeen point three degrees plus tan seventeen point three minus ten, and cot seventeen point three plus tan seven point three. So gamma you get approximately according to my calculation is three point four nine, three point four nine. Answer is three. Is it clear? This is how you have to solve. 
Is it clear, guys? Next. Tell me the next one, eighteenth one. Break angle is given. Shear angle is given. Cutting velocity is given. What is this? Chip velocity. You should do. You should do. Please, you should do now. Already we have discussed. If you want this relation, you can copy this relation. This relation you can copy. You have to use this relation. That is Vc by cos phi minus alpha is equal to Vs by cos alpha. That is equal to V of or V chip by sin phi. You copy this relation first. I'll wait here. Copy this relation. Then we have to use the relation in the problem that I have shown there. And tell, tell me the answer. Copy this relation. If you're copying, let me know. Okay. Did you copy this relation? Okay. Now, now tell me. Now tell me this answer. Now tell me this answer. What is given? Break angle is given. Alpha. What is this? Shear angle phi. What is this? Cutting velocity BC. What is asking? Chip velocity BF. Alpha phi BC is given. So relate BC and B chip. Relate BC and B chip. Am I right? Relate these two. Vc by cos phi minus alpha is equal to Vc by sin phi. Relate that to Vc by cos phi minus alpha is equal to V chip or Vf by sin phi. Phi and alpha are given. Substitute to the value. What is Vc? Vc is 35. Cos. What is phi? 45. Minus what is alpha? 15. V of we don't know. We have to find that by sine 15. We have to get some value. Can you tell me what is the value? At least do the calculation, guys. You have to be good in calculations as well. How much are you getting? Uh, Rishikesh is getting 25.3. You are getting 25.3? Come on, I don't have calculator. I got into me, answer is B. Is it right or wrong? What I am thinking? Calculation, guys, come on. Answer should be 27.9 something. Is it right or wrong? Tell me what is right or wrong. I haven't done the calculation. I have direct answer with me. Is it right? Are you getting 10 point something? Okay, let me do. Okay, what is that? 35 by cos 30 into sine 15 we have 35 into how much is sine 15 how much is sine 15 let me use some calculator Okay, 0 0.025 divided by what is cos 30? Cos 30. Cos 30, 0 0.8. Now do this calculation 35 into 0 0.25 by 0 0.866. How much are you getting? Is 
So 10.46. Okay, we are getting 10 point 10 minutes. Then somewhere we made a mistake. Ah, fine. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. This is not 15, this is 45. Sorry, it is sign five, sign not sign alpha. See, I also made a mistake here. Not good. You should not make mistakes. 45. So tell me how much is sign 45? What is sign 45 1 by root 2? How much is that? What is sign 45? What is sign 45? Zero point seven zero. Now tell me what is the answer. Thirty five into zero. Zero point seven zero seven divided by zero point eight twenty eight point five seven. Answer is A. Okay. Answer is A. That is A, not B. Okay, good. Next one. Now tell me, what is this answer? Nineteenth. Okay, D. No, sorry. Excuse me. Nineteen. Rishikesh is D. Navin is D. Prabhakar is A. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> what is rake angle back rake angle, right? This is rake angle. This is your tool and this is alpha. That is what is your back rake angle, rake angle. Simply they are saying that. If your rake angle is increasing, what will happen to cutting? If your rake angle is, okay. This is having less rake angle. This is having more rake angle. Rake angle is less, rake angle is more. In the sense, you are increasing the rake angle. That is what they are saying. So this can take good cutting forces or this can take good, good cutting forces. One and two. The first one will take good cutting forces or second will take good cutting forces. What do you say? Rake angle increases, this thing will decrease, right? Like this will become this thing. So what I'm saying is that, and I, I'm, uh, are you getting my question? This is having less rake angle like this. This is having more rake angle like this. Who will take more cutting forces? Who can take good cutting forces? One and two. If at all, I mean, if, if at all, you can, two is taking cutting forces, will it not break off? Yes or no? Because that this is becoming so much thin. So that's the reason why if you are increasing the rake angle, the cutting force that are that can be taken will be reduced. So answer will be A and C. And tool become thinner or thicker. That is what you say. That tool becomes thinner, obviously. Obviously, the tool will become thinner. A, B is A and this is A. Tool becomes thinner and the cutting force reduces, obviously. Answer is A. Clear or not? Yes. 
this one, twentieth one. Twentieth one. Okay, for this you have to use that uh, merchant uh, this thing. Okay, that big uh, merchant circle we have seen, isn't it? We have seen that, right? There we have, we have seen that uh, uh, that uh, uh, ft ft by r ft ft by r is equal to sin. Uh, we have seen that ft by r is equal to sin beta minus alpha. If you remember that merchant circle, have right, and then if you see. Uh, they say in the cutting operation, the friction angle and two, in the friction angle at ship two link faces. The friction beta is increasing, they say, more than radic angle, then the thrust force will be, they are saying, right? So the friction angle at ship two link faces is more than right phase. Okay. So then, uh, the thrust force will be thrust force, cutting force, this is thrust force. Okay. And if beta is increasing, then this is positive only. So T, if T is equal to R sine something, some value which is positive, obviously it will be. Is it not upwards? Is it upwards, right? It is upwards. Why it is downwards? Anyone? Why it is downwards? Rishikesh, what, what led you to the answer? This is FC. This is FT. It is upwards only, no? Yes. It is upwards. Okay. Next one. Come on, next one. Yeah, I'm dropping the top because I, I want to do the solution for next question as well. 21st one, come on. The cutting force is the coefficient of increase. If the coefficient of friction between two beta is zero, beta is zero, then resultant force is the resultant force on the tool shall be the friction between beta is zero. The resultant force. Okay, let us use the same form, same form, upper form only. Ft is equal to sin 0 minus alpha r into 0 minus alpha. So, so r is equal to sin minus alpha is minus alpha. So, minus Ft. So, is it not negative? Is it not negative? 21. No, no, no. Ft is positive. Sorry, it is positive only. Is upwards no, then it becomes downwards. Yeah, it is positive only. Yes, yes. Who told this answer? A yeah. excellent. Prabhakar, you told A. Yeah. For this question, you told A. Yeah. For which question, you told A. Yeah. Is it for 21st only? Yes, yes, very good. Very good. Come on, next one. 22, come on, we are doing little less. Come on, we have to do fast. So many questions are there. Come on. People are joining now also. Come on. 20 seconds.
okay how a which which question navin you are asking you are answering or you are you are okay you are asking question right okay this is the formula no you can use this formula actually they are asking about result and that is that is what the question is when I, mean, i feel the question is little awkward but i don't know okay let me take this only this this ft by r is equal to so sin minus you'll get minus r as this if if your ft is up like this then this is positive right ft and they are saying resultant uh, uh, okay this is this is what is this will be the resultant right this will be the resultant they are saying it is positive or negative always the resultant force will be positive why it will be negative that's why i told positive that is my logic but i am also to be frank is little bit okay i will i will answer this question in the next class let me check i am also having doubt i should not say as it is is it okay okay sorry for that i should i should also go back and check myself what is if i am i making some mistake i have to check why uh, how resultant force will be positive or negative i'm not getting whether i upward downward right word next uh, left word will be able to answer but convention will be different for different different people so we can't answer this question right away let me check oh okay 20 second man Thirty second one. Prakari thing A. Rishikesh is saying A. Why, sir? Anyone? Why? Why you are writing A? Why power consumption is increasing? Reduced, not increased. The power consumption is reduced as the ray angle is increasing. You are saying why? you are right actually you are right but you tell me why no 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 prabhakar you are right rishika also you are right you should tell me why the answer is clearance angle will not clearance angle increase incre increment will not affect power consumption much but ray angle only will affect because in all the formulas if you are seeing fc ft all the things ray angle will be coming into picture rather than uh, uh, clearance angle so of course we are not relating this we'll go by option by option widening the rose radius if you are increasing the rose radius power consumption will go up it won't come down so this is not the answer and increasing the cutting angles of the tools this is a very wide option answer option would be a only why if at all you are increasing the uh, rake angle what is happening cutting force will be coming down am i right less amount of cutting force will be taken care of as a reason we cutting power also is coming down is it is it okay already we have done this thing here this thing the cutting force is reduced as the rake angle increases yes yes or no as cutting force is reducing power consumption consumption also will be coming down am i right there is no speed why speed is coming into picture here we are discussing about cutting power so directly proportional to cutting velocity of course but here okay you want to see in velocity in terms also right okay so you are saying cutting power is equal to fc to vc okay let's assume that so let's go to that formula vc but how can i relate that because we don't know anything about chip bend so we can't relate vc we can't relate with vs and v chip but we can relate with cutting force okay so as cutting force is coming down power consumption also will come coming down as alpha is increasing okay good good question you right 
So it's a good analysis. Actually, you wanted to. Uh, Prabhakar wants to analyze this thing not only with force, he wants to analyze with velocity. But I can't compare velocity because velocity is depending upon Vs and V chip. Nothing, in, no information is given about Vs and V chip. If information is given, then we would have done. But no information is given. Hence, we will compare with cutting force only. So as alpha is increasing, we have already seen. As cutting alpha is increasing, cutting force will reduce. As cutting force reduces, your power consumption will reduce. That's the reason why cutting power consumption will reduce if your alpha is increasing. Okay, clear? Concept is clear? Next one. Next one. What is specific uh, energy? Specific cutting energy. What was the formula we have discussed? It was what? Is it not? Uh, yes, power by MRR. Power by MRR. MRI. Why Rushikesh? Why is it D? Among conventional process, maximum specific energy. Cutting power by material removal rate. Okay, so the material removed from grind grinding is very less compared to turning drilling training. Is it right? Yes, yes, Rushikesh, you are on the right logic. Less material is removed. That's the reason why specific cutting energy is maximum in this case because power by MRR that was our specific cutting energy. Power we didn't he does it didn't mention anything about power, right? But according to process, turning will remove more material. So denominator will be more. Drilling also will remove more material. Denominator will be more. Planing also will remove more material. But grinding will remove very less number of material. As the less number of total is more, that's why specific energy is more in grinding. Is it okay? And also it is a surface operation. No, that's why. Fine. Okay. So there are some more questions, but we are we are like out of time. And we'll discuss these things tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Is it okay? Okay. If you have any doubts, please let me know. I'm here. I'm stopping the recording.